We return to our lead story, North Korea. We want to explore what options are before the Trump administration and get some insights into the reclusive North Korean regime. That comes from retired U.S. Navy Admiral Dennis Blair. He served as commander of American forces in the Pacific and later as President Obama's first director of national intelligence. And Sue Mi Terry. She spent seven years as a senior Korea analyst at the CIA and later as a director director on the National Security Council. And we welcome both of you back to the news hour. I'm going to start with you, Admiral Blair. More tough language just in the last few hours from President Trump. How do you size up where this situation stands right now? Well, like many administrations, this administration believes that uh, when it becomes aware of a problem, it's the first time that the problem ever existed. And uh, those of us who have been dealing with North Korea for many years know that uh, it's hyperbolic, threat-laced language. It's nothing new. That's simply the way it talks. It has a very s small military capability with, uh, and, and talks loud for both deterrence and to try to intimidate. And uh, the military facts are that it uh, is very limited in, in what, it can, what it can do. So uh, I'm unimpressed by this level of talk. Uh, you have to look at the underlying military situations, which hasn't changed, which is very much in the Amer American and uh, Korea South Korean and Japanese favor. This is not new, Judy. So, Sue Mi Terry, uh, how are things different this time? Well, I think, honestly, the wild card here is Mr. Trump, because, as Admiral Blair said, those of us who's been following North Korean issue for a very long time, we understand that this is how North Korea behaves. Um, or Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-il, and before that, Kim Il-sung, and this is how North Koreans behave. So um, the war card here is Mr. Trump um, with his rhetoric, a very increased rhetoric. But honestly, at the end of the day, I'm not sure, even though we say military option is on the table, um, if that is something that is really realistic at this juncture, because North Korea is a nuclear power already, and they have a conventional, there are conventional artillery, artillery forces. I mean, their artillery pieces are over 10,000 within 60 seconds of Seoul. Um, and there are 20 million people living in Seoul. We have 300,000 Americans living in South Korea, never mind 28,500 American soldiers in Korea and in Japan and so on. So um, I think just Mr. Trump putting himself out there on a ledge like this just really increased the risk of um, you know, blundering into a conflict that no one really wants. Is that what you see, uh, Admiral Blair, that could happen? You said a minute ago the North Koreans have a uh, small capability. Uh, I mean, what do you think the prospects are for, for conflict? I think the prospects for conflict are, are really very low. Uh, the facts are known by both the United States and Korea are that if Korea starts a conventional military conflict, they lose. They lose. Uh, North Korea loses the regime. The dictator loses his life. If they were to use a nuclear weapon against uh, Korea the, or South Korea or Japan, much less the United States, we would retaliate with nuclear weapons. Uh, they may have 15 or 20. We have about 2,000. Uh, and it's the end of the regime. And this is not a suicidal regime. They operate very cleverly, just below the level of major war or major provocation, which they know they would lose. And we, we're seeing more of that now. So I don't rate the chances of conflict as high. Sumi Terry, you met recently with representatives of North Korea, the, the DPRK. What, what is your assessment of them and their attitude right now, even though you obviously can't talk to them this minute? Right. No, I, I think North Koreans are bent on um, completing their nuclear program. Kim Jong-un is bent on completing his nuclear arsenal that his father and grandfather have pursued at cost of millions of dollars and billions of lives. And that I don't think North Koreans are ready to give up. They're not going to give up nuclear weapons. They have said over and over um, explicitly that they're not going to give it up. It's not up to, uh, for negotiation anymore. Maybe Kim Jong-il, his father, was willing to negotiate to get some concessions. But I think that's no longer the case. I think Kim Jong-un will complete the program. He, they said that they're going, they going to continue with testing, uh, even an ICBM test, which they have followed through with that threat. Um, so I, I think they will continue with this path. Given that, Admiral Blair, do you see a way out? I, I see the way out as uh, intensification of the current uh, set of measures we're taking North Korea. We don't accept them as a nuclear threat, as a nuclear state, despite the reality of their having a nuclear capability. 
Uh, we squeeze them very hard uh, economically, and the new set of UN sanctions are good. We're always ready to uh, talk to them in case they want to uh, actually change the, co the course of their policy. We keep our military defenses, both conventional and nuclear, strong, and we wait for this terrible, brutal dictator who has oppressed his people, his family's oppressed his people, to fall, which he eventually will, as other dictators have. Sumi Terry, how do you see this playing out? I agree with Admiral Blair's assessment completely. I think we need to continue with our pressure, our sanctions. We have to, even if we have to go to go after a boy, secondary a boycott against Chinese banks and entities that do illicit business, business with North Korea to to keep on the pressure on the Chinese, we have to do that. And I would just add, um, I think also information warfare uh, against the North Korean regime is very important because at the end of the day, under this regime, not much is going to change, and we need a different regime coming into North Korea. And when we say regime change, I'm not talking about military strike or decapitation at the head. I'm talking about helping North Korean people bring about the change that we need. And that should be the long-term game. And before that, it should be containment, deterrence, and pressure. And just quickly, Admiral Blair, any doubt in your mind that the U.S. and its allies can deter the North Koreans before they do uh, serious damage, wreak serious havoc on the region or on the U.S.? I'm, I'm very confident of that. Uh, Judy, this, uh, this dictatorship has a highly refined sense of self-preservation and attacking the United, conducting a major attack on the United States is a recipe for the end of the regime, not for the continua continuation. And, uh, and if this regime can do anything, it, uh, it can uh, do what's necessary to survive. Admiral Dennis Blair, Sumi Terry, we thank you both. Thank you for having us on. Thank you. You're welcome, Judy.